From the center of the universe, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this is the SDM Show with your host, Rob Cairns. The SDM Show focuses on business, life, productivity, digital marketing, WordPress, and more. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Here is Rob. Hey, everybody. Rob Cairns here. I'm the founder, CEO, and chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. In today's podcast, I sit down with Ryan Waterbury on our monthly series on marketing for agencies. And in today's episode, Ryan and I are going to talk about your marketing budget. This is one episode you don't want to miss. So grab a drink, hit pause, and then come back and sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation that Ryan and I had. This episode of the STM Show is sponsored by Stunning Digital Marketing, the agency to handle all your WordPress website security needs. Go on over to stunningdigitalmarketing.com and find out how we can help you secure your website so you no longer have an issue with backups, being hacked, or your website being compromised. That's stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Hey, everybody, Rob Terrence here. Today I'm here with Ryan Waterbury, and we're going to continue our series of what agencies should look at for their clients. How are you today, Ryan? I'm doing great. And How are you today, doing? I'm doing okay, considering the challenges of no internet access and WordPress drama. I think I'm doing pretty good, actually. So, so today we're going to jump into and explore why companies need a marketing budget. And I think this comes from many discussions you and I have had over a couple of years and saying, do they even think about it? Do they think about this an expense? They don't have a budget. And that goes beyond, am I going to run ads or not run ads? And what I'm going to do. So let's kind of break it down. What do you think should be in a marketing budget? For a company. Well, first off, you need one. <laughs> That's uh, number one. They're almost always with um, startups, nonprofits, um, any any business. There's zero allotted for a marketing budget, and I I can't tell you how many times that I have to explain to customers that. Um. They, they need a marketing budget. They need to think about it. And um, there, there are two things that really come into play, time and money. And uh, time can only solve so many things. Uh, and that, that, that's usually when we talk about content marketing uh, and putting the time in to actually write content or produce content. Um, the second thing, money. Uh, when, when we start talking about marketing budgets, uh, there are a lot of eye opening, um, <laughs> eye opening, uh, conversations that happen that business owners are, uh, especially the, the newer ones. And I work with a lot of, uh, entrepreneurs, some serial entrepreneurs, they understand, you know, that there's an investment and it's not an expense. Uh, it's an, a necessary investment that needs to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. that needs to be budgeted for. So let me throw a scenario at you. The business owner says to you, oh, great, I don't need a budget. I have an employee who will post pictures on Instagram all day long about my business. What do you think about that? Um, I think that's terrible. And here's why. <laughs> How do you know your customers are in Instagram? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a marketing budget, when we look at a, at a whole uh, marketing campaign, there's actual research that we do. And uh, when I put together a proposal, we do some discovery. Uh, you know, we build customer personas and we, f we figure out who's buying your products. So that... Let's take that scenario, that customer that says, ah, I'm going to post random stuff on Instagram. One, is it 
going to be seen by your customer. Two, if it is seen by your customer, is it relevant and is it what they're looking for? Uh, a lot of times um, <laughs> you can spend a lot of time doing those things, but are they going to give you the returns? No, I agree with that. And what I'd add to this honestly is not only, you know, I don't need a budget. And my response would be at that part-time employee is doing three hours of posting on Instagram. That three hours times their salary should be part of your marketing budget. It's not free. And whether it's time that you're paying somebody to do it or the budget of actually doing it, there's still a cost to it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, I think about it uh, like I do with my accounting. I can do it, but it takes me longer. And my accountant usually yells at me a little bit when I when I try and do some things in the books and she has to clean them up. So I end up paying for it. Uh, and that was one of the first things that I realized. My time is better spent doing things that I'm good at in, in my business and hand it off to professionals to take care of those things because that's what they do uh, at the core. And marketing is a service and it's not an expense. I think I alluded to it early. It's an investment that um, you absolutely need to think about. I, whether, I, go ahead. Yeah, whether you do it yourself uh, and pay someone internally or you partner with an agency. No, I agree with that. Now, the kind of things that should be in a budget, we've just sort of alluded to the salaries of the people involved. That's number one. I think where a lot of people miss the boat on marketing is anything to do with your website should be in that budget as well. Is that true or is that an operational expense? Uh, I was thinking about this the other day and in relation to uh, one of my clients that, you know, I, I had talked about web care and some of the other things that come along with, you know, owning a website. And he said, oh, I don't need all that stuff. So I hit him with the uh, web care owner's manual and, you know, reminded them that your website is your number one marketing tool. It's not something that you just need uh, to have. I mean, you can certainly run a business without it, but you're less likely to be found by your ideal clients. So a, a properly built website that's performant and relays your service or product information to your uh, ideal customers, uh, it, it's the foundation for, uh, in, at least in my opinion, um, the start of every uh, marketing campaign. No, I, I would agree with you. I think it's the start. I think it's your home base. We, You and I have talked about it's one of those things you own. It's not rented space or rented land or borrowed, whatever you want to put on it. So I think from that standpoint, it's really worth um, including that in your budget. What other things should be in the budget? I, You know, I talked about the time budget earlier. If, mm -hmm. you know, with your website as a foundation, I think every business uh, needs to blog and uh, talk about different things, achievements that they've made as a business, uh, case studies, um, new product reviews. And uh, with your website, you need to take into account that time that it's going to take you to uh, produce content and make updates. The second part of that time budgeting is your website is the hub and your social media channels. We touched on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Those are all spokes uh, from your central hub, which is your, your website. Um, even the, the Google business listing uh, should be updated regularly. So 
you need to first off account for time for just the basic updates and, and content creation. This is the time budget. The second part of this um, is when we start looking at paid advertisement. That's when you need to, one, look at creating content for the paid ads, which is a time uh, piece. But then you also need to start looking at ad spend and how much does it actually cost for me to acquire a new client. And that's a big factor. And what people, again, don't understand, and it's something I think we've got to keep beating a drum against the wall, is it always costs more to keep an existing client than to acquire a new one. Yeah, the uh, I was in a uh, discovery meeting with a uh, videographer, um, really talented guy, and uh, we were talking about doing a commercial production. And uh, he was asking just some general questions about how to – uh, get new clients. Um, I was a referral uh, to him. So that that's how I think most of us in the uh, the web and digital marketing industry get a lot of our clients right off the bat is referrals. But beyond that, if your business didn't get any referrals, how would you survive? And what does it actually cost, you know, to go out and acquire new clients? Mm-hmm. And if you're selling a higher dollar service, um, or product. One of the numbers that, that I've seen and measured is 30% of the net profit of that project, uh, can, can actually be necessary to land that client. It's true. What I, and I, and I think, sorry, Ren, and I think the other thing we need to look at is what should you spend, right? I mean, you know, where PPC ad, pay-per-click ads are concerned, a lot of people like to take the old gorilla tactics. Oh, I'll throw $10 a day at something or $15 a day. I truly believe those tactics don't work anymore. No, those days are gone. And uh, that used to buy you a lot on – Facebook and Instagram, but they've slowly been creeping up their ad pricing. Um, It used to be ridiculously cheap to advertise on Facebook versus uh, Google. Now that's not really the case. And if you're setting a low budget uh, like that, you're likely not even producing enough impressions or conversions to actually let the AI uh, figure out who your ideal client is. Uh, you, you have to spend, I would say, at least uh, five to ten times that. If you were developing a marketing budget, and I know a lot of it depends on what industry you're at. Is it a profit or a nonprofit? And a lot of that. Um, do you think that... Um, where should you concentrate the budget besides your website, in your opinion? So when I look at new marketing clients, uh, we do two things. And generally, uh, if we've done a web build with them or if they have an existing web presence, we look at improving that web presence and starting SEO. Mm -hmm. SEO is a long-term game. So you may start to see results uh, 90 days from now, six months from now, a year from now. So we usually look at uh, a hybrid approach where we start building content, optimizing uh, the site appropriately, looking for backlinks, uh, seeing where we can improve things immediately on the SEO side. But a portion of that budget in my opinion, absolutely has to be spent on PPC. PPC, pay-per-click, will get immediate eyes on on your product or your service. And that takes some fine-tuning, but uh, it will 
provide you quicker results than the uh, the long game of SEO. So I think a hybrid approach works just generally for most of the businesses out there. That's a really good point. And um, we all know that PPC has uh, a more interim approach. And I want to kind of touch on, so you're a client, you go out and hire a marketing agency, you say my budget's $1,000 a month, whatever, just for a round figure. And then you go and you say, oh, is it not only $1,000 a month? Just go do it. So the agency runs off and do it. And you say, oh, I got five clicks or five leads. And my problem with a lot of agencies is they don't do proper reporting back to the clients. And I think you know where I'm going to go with this. If you don't do proper reporting, how does the client, any agency, optimize what they're trying to do? So it really comes down to dollars. And uh, you don't have to have it. And I know some other SEOs take this philosophy as well, that you don't have to have exact and vanity metrics reporting. If your client is seeing an increase in revenue, they're happy. If they're Mm -hmm. not seeing an increase in revenue, they're going to question what you're doing. And so revenue increase and attribution models uh, really need to be looked at. Uh, What are you doing uh, in a marketing campaign that is helping to increase your client's revenue? That's, that's really the bottom line in, in the most general terms. Um, it, it could be uh, increased leads coming in. Uh, and, but are those leads closed? Are they good leads? Uh, e-commerce gets a little easier because you can see sales numbers where more products are sold. That's an immediate impact. Uh, there's some more complex things there, but that's just that's a measurable uh, metric. But in general, if your client sees an uptick in business after you start a marketing campaign, that's one of the the easiest things that you can measure and report. Yeah, I would agree with that to a point. But what I more meant is if you're throwing your marketing dollars, say, at a PPC campaign, at social media, and at your email list. And for example, your email list comes back and says that the metric that that shows you where more and more people are generating leads and sales from, that tells you you probably should spend more money on your email list. And those are more the kind of numbers I'm concerned about is how do you optimize that those campaigns if you don't know where your results are coming from. Oh, absolutely. Um, you want to know which channel is is producing results. You're not going to know that right away. And that's what I started to talk about with the when we were asking about the, the $5 and $10 campaigns. That's not enough to put your product in front of enough of your ideal clients uh, to see any measurable results. Mm-hmm. So it's now actually saying Facebook's now saying for them to even figure out where to target your ads, you're looking at a thousand to two thousand dollars now. Believe it or not. Oh, absolutely, and I mean you're competing against a lot of I mean a lot of uh, other companies. But uh, people get ad blind. <laughs> and when you're scrolling through a feed, uh, how many ads do you personally look at? Yep. I, I, I work in the industry, and so it takes a lot for me to look at ads. <laughs> I mean, oh, a I'm, lot. I, I'm awful working in the industry. I turn on conventional TV and say, okay. This ad, yuck. This ad, yuck. This ad, yuck. And I was watching the Olympic Games last month, and I said to somebody recently that only two ads 
on Canadian television uh, really caught my eye and attention. Everything else I can't tell you what the products were, who they were, and why not. One th- one thing when we talk about spend, and, and this gets back to time, when you mentioned email list, a highly underutilized uh, tactic uh, or question is if you've got people that purchased your product and they're in your email marketing list, send out a survey. You might not get a lot of people to fill the survey out, but they're going to tell you what they like about your business. Mm -hmm. And you're probably going to get some responses back if you do an honest survey of what they don't like about your service. So one, that's a way to improve, uh, the, the features and, and the benefits uh, that you can use in new ad material and focus on those when you're looking for new clients. Mm-hmm. So it's knowing about your ideal customer is a huge part of the marketing game. And, and, when, you, and when you send out that survey, little pro tip here, Say you'll give away a couple Amazon fifty dollars, not Amazon, Amazon or Starbucks fifty dollar gift cards if you fill it out, and give them away. That hundred dollars would be the best hundred dollars you ever spend from a marketing budget because it'll tell you a lot. Exactly. Uh, you you want to make one the survey easy uh, to fill out and ask the appropriate questions to get good information back. But two, you want to incentivize. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's the yeah, same reason w- when you go into a restaurant. You ever see on the bill, if you fill in the survey, we'll enter you in a draw for a free meal. Same reason. Oh, exactly. I mean, there, there are ways, all sorts of ways to find out about uh, who your best customers are. And you want to find people like them that like your product, like your service, the more that you know about your ideal client, the easier the marketing game gets because you start to show more ads or provide more content and more value added um, pieces to people that are like your customers that may not have purchased from you yet. So true. Now, something I really want to talk about in term determining the budget, and this has a lot to do with money, is value of expertise. So we've all heard it. Why should I pay an agency when I can get a student to do it for $15 an hour or $10 an hour or $14 an hour? And my response usually is, go ahead and try. And they look at me and they say, really? And I said, because I guarantee you nine out of 10 times, you will never get the same results out of somebody who has not been doing this a long time. And that impacts a direct impact on the budget and what you're going to spend on marketing dollars. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of clients that, come to me for marketing are in business owners and individuals who have either worked with another web company, worked with another marketer, or more uh, typically have tried the DIY route and they're just not seeing any results. They've come to the realization that it's not an easy thing to go out and find new clients. (laughs) There are a lot of uh, moving parts in a, in a uh, marketing campaign, uh, especially in digital marketing campaigns, with more privacy focused uh, efforts out there, it's gotten even more difficult to collect information about your customers from website visitors. So, relying the the clients I work with that. Uh, come to me and and ask how they can improve, uh, how they can get more business. Those are the clients I like to work with because they realize the value that working with a uh, professional uh, gives them. That they've realized that 
I need to budget. I need to spend some money to go on and find new clients. Yeah, the same reason you and I in the agency game need to spend money to go find new clients. Um, it's a it's a tart. And the other thing I would say to people is, don't wait till your downtime to say now I need to spend money. Do it in your uptime and do it all year round because it's always easier to find new clients when you're busy than when you're not busy. It's it, when, when I look at my own marketing and um, what I, what I have to do, I consciously schedule time. I constantly uh, have to remind myself that I need to take the time to uh, write an in, informative blog, send out new newsletters to my list. Mm-hmm. Um, and, this is in addition to doing the daily work of managing client campaigns, building new sites, uh, making sure their sites are secure, uh, running fast, and there aren't any issues. It it can be a daunting task that I think we're more aware of it because we we do these things and realize how much running an ad campaign uh, can be. But to set that time aside for myself knowing how much time is involved, it's challenging. Uh, because first and foremost, we, we want to make our customers happy and work on, work on stuff for them. But uh, in order to grow and maintain our businesses, it's an active process that we need to think about. And uh, we need to educate clients to think about marketing takes time. It does. It is a marathon job, not a sprint. And people need to realize that sooner or later. I mean, it's an ongoing battle and then some. So um, if you were limited on budget, and we've kind of talked a little bit about money and PPC or SEO or wherever, where would you start putting your money? Content marketing, hands down. Uh, I first off, I would take a hard look at SEO and uh, take a look at your website, your number one marketing tool, and see how people are using it. Uh, see what people are doing on your website. That will give you the most bang for the buck of uh, any other marketing method. Uh, the the lasting benefits of SEO uh, it can be for years. And as uh, other SEO professionals and myself will say, the best time to start was six months ago. And, you know, when business owners look at dollars and, you know, a lot of them see it as, as an expense, um, you know, so PPC, sometimes it's off the table and that's fine. But a lot of them that started out in that, that DI, DIY realm with coaching, education, and um, some SEO consulting, they can do content. And they're happy to spend extra hours themselves uh, versus paying uh, you know, for, for ad space. That's been my experience uh, to seeing positive benefits when you're on a limited budget is really the time factor. Um, you know, it, so that SEO, you would think SEO. Yeah. I would tend to agree with you long-term, but then also realize if you don't have the budget, you're not going to get the results right away. So they kind of go hand in hand as well. Right. That's the other, that's the other thing is educating and marketing isn't an, an expense at all. It's an investment. And that, that's why I picked out SEO uh, as, uh, as the starting point, because SEO is an investment. And that's how I approach it with every new client, that it's a long-term investment. So the, when I talk with clients about marketing in general, and we talk about 
seeing the results uh, and that it can be a, a long game, that this is an investment, they start to see that marketing as a whole, not just the SEO portion, is an investment and not an expense. So that changes the conversation a little bit. And um, thinking starts to change that we need to budget not only time, but also money for future improvements. Mm-hmm. Um, while we're budgeting, and I always say to my clients, it all depends on what the product is worth to you and what the marketing result is worth to you. So, and by that, I mean, if I was working on something for high-end coaching products that were selling for $2,000, $3,000 a pop, I would be determining my marketing budget more different than if I was selling a 1999 book. What is your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, um, when we look at higher ticket items, whether it's a service or a product, there are less people that are going to be buying that product or even looking for that product. So you're going to have uh, potentially a higher cost of acquisition for someone to buy that product. And if let's say your your um, $2,000 product, um, spending uh $200 for every sale would not be unheard of at all, if not a little more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's true. And people don't look at it that way. Like if the $200 product gets you, not product, advertising gets you a $2,000 sale, I'll take that every day. Like honestly, I know of one story where I had a client before Christmas one year, who we debated around the ad spend for Facebook ads. And $3,000 in Facebook ad spend turned into one $50,000 custom sale. That is a win, win, win every day of the year. Absolutely. And, uh, you, especially with small business owners, until they see that sale, that three thousand dollars is an expense. It's mm-hmm. not an investment. It's you know money that they have to spend and 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 pay to get that result. It's that's a hurdle that we always struggle with when we talk about marketing budgets. That we need people to get eyeballs on your product or service. And in order to do that, we need to compete against other businesses that are spending this money to get eyeballs on their product. And if you don't do that, people won't see your product and you won't, won't convert sales. Yeah. And that is so true. And the other thing when you're doing your budget, people need to keep in mind is they need to do repetition. Just because people see your product once doesn't mean they're going to buy or even look at it the first time, the second time, the third time, or the fourth time. No, that comes back to the uh, standard rule in sales that's been around for eons. Uh, You need seven touches with a client before they're likely to buy your product. And I, those touches and we talk about the customer journey and where they interact with your business. Um, part of the marketing is uh, having good branding and a good presence out in the world and mm-hmm. being active on your social channels, responding to questions appropriately. That's all part of uh, the marketing process. It's not just writing good content, um, spending money on ads. It, it's a cohesive process that needs to happen. And, you know, it, it touches into uh, public relations a little bit, but having uh, a good image and good response 
uh, that potential clients can see when you're in interacting and answering questions on in public spaces, um, it makes a difference and it influences the choices that, that, that uh, customers make. So marketing is not an easy process. It, it, it encompasses a lot of different things. It yeah, becomes it does. A, one of the things that I've noticed, if you're in a smaller niche space, it it's more difficult than some of the other generalized uh, products and services out there. Have have you noticed that? Yeah, it, it's so true, and it's and people don't really understand that at all. Yeah, if there was a uh, magic key uh, to turn and sales would come rolling in, um, I'd have a million dollars. <laughs> oh, if there was a magic key to turn, I would have been rich and retired years ago, Ryan. So, yeah, we, we laugh about that, but it, it's so true, right? I mean, it's, yeah. Um. The other thing we also need to keep in mind is with marketing dollars, just kind of while we're hashing it out, is if you're niching down, and we hear in industry, oh, you should niche down your products, you should niche down this, you should niche down that. From a marketing digital perspective, the more you dish down, the more it's going to cost you. Uh, Yes and no. Uh, The returns can be greater. And when we, when you have a good product and you're not serving, I mean, we see this in the, in our realm, um, you know, uh, my particular niches are, um, politics, nonprofits and small startups. Mm -hmm. Those are the businesses that I've been most successful with. And I know the most about, so I've already tested, uh, dozens of different funnels, uh, over the years, one with uh, a lot with my myself, and um, that, but through uh, marketing campaigns and refining uh, client campaigns, yeah. uh, as we find that we get down tighter into you know that ideal customer and that that smaller market, it does require some more spend to get there. Um, but once you get there and zone in. Um, you can start to bring in customers more easily. That That is so true from that perspective. But I still think, so I'll give you an example. There are certain keywords and there are certain industries when we're running ads that cost more. So let's jump into the industries for a minute. We all know that anything in the financial services industry, if you're doing Google ads or Facebook ads cost more. There's um, certain industries that are hard. They're regulated more when you're doing, when you're determining a budget. So, you know, you got to look for sometimes alternative means on where you're going to throw your advertising dollars. For example, you are um, a gun collector. Um, You cannot throw money at gun ads on many social media platforms. It's just not a lot. Even if you had the budget, you just can't do it. I've had clients that are in the firearms manufacturing industry yeah. and it's, it's a, it's an, it's an interesting industry to work in. Um, but you're absolutely right. The uh, you have to be very careful about how you spend your ad dollars, and um, that's a particular industry where, uh, from experience and knowing what you can do on the platforms and what impact you can have, um, you know, that's one uh, that we would go very heavy into SEO and building the presence on the website Hmm. now, um. You know, and that that's one of the, the benefits of working with a professional. We know what you can do on the platform and, and what kind of results you can expect and where 
uh, where you can have the biggest impact. Yeah. So but you, you know, you talk, you talk, you talked a little bit about some of the, the financial industry and also about the marketing industry. Um, seeing a $75 per click charge <laughs> isn't unheard of. No, it's not. It's not at all. So as we kind of wrap this up, what is your number one tip to developing that budget? Uh, you you need to understand uh, who buys your product. One, uh, understanding your your clients. Uh, that's that's probably. Uh, the number one um, generality. Once you understand who's buying your product and how much they're spending on your product, then you can backtrack and start to build a marketing budget based on that. Mm -hmm. And around, you know, that, that number uh, you can carve out anywhere from, 10 to 30% of the profit on your product or service. Those are just general numbers, but that's where, where I would start with your ideal client looking at their uh, total lifetime value and uh, starting with a budget of let's say 10%. Let's be uh, very modest. And that could be your time uh, calculated into dollars or that could be uh, partnering with an agency and including ad spend. That's a really good point, Ryan. If somebody wants to get a hold of you, how's the best way? Uh, let's start with my website, onedog.solutions, uh, and on every major social media platform, at One Dog Solutions, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all are good methods. Um, you can email me at ryan.waterbury at onedog.solutions, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks, Ryan. Have a great day. Hey, you too. This episode of the STM show is sponsored by Stunning Digital Marketing, the agency to handle all your WordPress website security needs. Go on over to stunningdigitalmarketing.com and find out how we can help you secure your website so you no longer have an issue with backups, being hacked, or your website being compromised. That's stunningdigitalmarketing.com. A very special thank you to Ryan for joining me on this edition of the SDM Show. Thanks, Ryan, for sharing your knowledge as we talked about determining your marketing budget. This is one episode that you'll probably want to go back and listen to a second time with a pen and paper and take some notes because it can help your agency grow. Thank you for listening to this edition of the SDM Show. The SDM Show is brought to you by Rob Cairns and Stunning Digital Marketing. For more information about Rob Cairns and Stunning Digital Marketing, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.info. From here, you can connect to us on social media, go to our website, and even go to the podcast to subscribe. This podcast is dedicated to my late father, Bruce Cairns. Dad, I miss you very much. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. Make your business succeed.